this is Laura GB and this video is going to be walking through a exercise I've had to do at least three times in the last month of handling Excel files and getting them into some form of format that I can put them into a report. So let's go and have a look at the Excel file that is the problem. Okay, so this is a, a vanilla version of it. It's not client data. So here we are. I got them to store it in OneDrive. That was the first challenge. And so let's open that file. I've called it Merged Nightmare. It shows how well I think about it. So we're going to go open and we're going to open it in the app. And up fires Excel. And there we are in all its glory. I've got merged cells. I've, there's, there's my multi row headings. A merge cell right across the whole thing. I've got text in amongst my data. It's all great stuff. So we're going to tidy that up in two, three tables in Power BI. So first thing, go to File, go to Info, Copy Path. Okay. And then I can close that. And we can minimize that. And we're in Power BI. So now let's get that data into Power BI. So we're going to go for, we've been given a web address. So therefore I've, by using that copy from Excel. So I'm going to go for get data web. And I'm going to paste into that. And then I'm going to get rid of that question mark web equals one. And I'm going to click OK. And, off it, and there we are, sheet one. If I tick there, there you are. There's my delightful mess. And let's click transform. So it's done a couple of things for me. It's So the source takes me to the Excel file. Navigation takes me to the right sheet. Promoted headers and change type. It's guessing here, okay? So I'm going to remove change type and I'm going to remove promoted headers, okay? So the first thing we're going the first thing we're going to do okay is we're going to lose our um we're going to lose our top row because quality scores is just totally useless i don't need that so i'm going to remove rows and i'm going to remove top rows we just want one row to go click ok now power queries isn't very good at combining um rows together um, but it is quite good at combining columns together so let's do a quick transpose so where columns become rows and rows become columns so i'm going to do a transpose into there okay and there we are we've now got a column here that's got our years in it it's got some missing ones but we're going to fill that in a second okay and we've got some quarters so i'm going to fill these these ones in these 2020 and these 2019 so we're going to on the transform ribbon there's fill so i've picked the right column and then i'm going to go fill down we're going to use that trick a few times now it's got team members a few times up there don't worry we're going to cope with that and then i've got two columns here that i want to combine so i'm going to highlight column one and column two and on the transform ribbon again we're going to go for merge columns and the separator I'm going to put into there is I'm going to go for a custom one and I'm going to go for a hyphen. And let's click OK. So there we are. We've got our, our columns there and that works. OK. And then I've got people and things. So we've now combined those two top rows. So we're going to go back in and do a transpose back again. So there we are. We've now got, we've got team members, team members, team members, but we'll, we'll cope with that. Um, Q1 upwards, etc. That works. Now these are ready to become my column headers. So on the transform ribbon again, for, use first row as headers. Let's click onto there. And it's, it had to cope with team members being there multiple times, but we're going to rename that in a second. Don't worry about it. So we've got pretty pretty good here. We've got it so that we've got columns there. They're all they're all unique. We've got no merged things there. Um, down here, I want to do some filling down again. 
So I'm going to highlight those two columns. And we're going to use fill again. And we're going to go fill down. OK, so Alice is in the retail team, which is in commercial. And all these teams are in commercial. All these teams are in admin. And that's got my data into a sensible, no merge cells. All the data's there. That's not a problem. OK, we've got that. That's cool. I like it. So the next part I want to do, OK, is I'm just going to rename these. Um, so I'm going to rename that first column to be division. And I'm going to rename this one to be team. And then I'm going to rename this one to be team member. So that's now I've got it to a lot better shape than I had. But now what we're going to do is, so I'm going to call this data, the original data. But I now want to move it from this into very simple, but three separate tables. Um, so that we've got the, the, the fact data, which is all the scores. And we've got the team member details as, a, as, as one as one dimension. And I've got the um, the period details as another section, because I want to put some dates around those as well. So I am going to do a insert a before we before we go any further I'm going to insert a index column so let's go and put an index column in from one because somebody being person zero slightly weird and I'm going to call this member ID or person ID whatever you want to call it okay so Let's do a right click and a reference to that. This is going to be my team members table. And I am going to do my, from the home ribbon, I'm going to do some choose columns. And I'm going to take out most of them and just bring in those four. So all the bits about the team person, the member of the team, and click OK. Now, I'd quite like member ID to be the first column just because in my head that works. Now, I could do a rearrange and drag and drop it, or I could take member ID off of there, take out the comma up in the M code, and put it in there and press return. Didn't want to put. And there we go. It's put it at the front. Now what's happened is it's, is it's put a is it's put a return into the M code, which is slightly confusing as well. So let's just do that for a second. Go to the end and press return. And there we go. So that's my team people. I'm happy with that. That table is fine. I'm going to leave that one alone. Back to the original data, and uh, I'm doing a, going to do a right click and a reference again. And this time, this one, we're going to make this the scores. OK, so what we're going to do here is we are going to go for Choosing our columns, I'm going to take out, actually I'm not going to do a choose columns because I, I, I'm aware that they're going to use 2021 and they're going to expand this. I really don't want to list these columns. So what I'm going to do is I am going to do what I regularly don't do, which is I'm going to remove columns. OK, that's not what I wanted to do. I want to highlight all three of those columns and do it as one step. Remove columns. OK. Now what I want to do is I want to what's called unpivot. 
say that I want a row that says um, member one, 2019 quarter one, the score was seven. Member one, 2019 quarter two, the score was eight. That's what we're going to go for. So you need to be aware that when you do this, you will lose all your nulls. So if you don't want to lose your nulls, you have to work out some way to replace those. Um, I've There are multiple ways to do that. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go for the ID column. I've highlighted that one. And then I am going to go to uh, transform, unpivot other columns. And there we go. We go unpivot other columns and it's got the member ID and then it names them. So attribute and value. So I'm going to edit the M code. I'm going to the attribute column. Well, I could call that period. And the value is going to be a score. OK, now the score, it can't guess what to do in there. So it's got my ABC123 in the top corner there. So I'm just going to take the score column and I am going to make it a whole number. Right. And now you can see you've got a red line that's showing up there. There's going to be there, there are some errors. OK. And if I scroll down and find one, there's one. Don't click on the word error. Click on the space next to it. And there you are down the bottom here. What says we couldn't convert to number details N.A. So it couldn't convert N.A. into a number. By the way, if you do click on the error, what it does is it adds a step into your um, applied steps. So I'm going to remove that just to, just to show you why I wouldn't have done what that. So to remove those rows, I am going to go to the home ribbon. And under remove rows, if you do the drop down on there, you'll see the last one there says remove errors. So it's just going to delete those rows because I'm working on theory that if there was text in there, there was no score. Don't want the row. And there we are. It's all gone green again. Great. That's what I want. So member ID, period, score. That's fine. I like that. That works. So that gives me those. I am next going to go for um, my scores. I want to have a list of the periods and what dates they are. So I am going to do a right click on scores and I'm going to do a reference. OK, and this is going to be called this table is going to be called periods. OK, and we're going to go for choose columns. And I'm just going to have the period column. OK, so we've got all of our periods there. What I need is I need the unique columns. The, sorry, the unique values. So we're going to go remove rows and we're going to remove duplicates. And there we are. We're down to our six quarters. Now, I want to convert that into dates. So I want the period start and the period end. Now, I am sticking to a... Um, a year that's a 12 month calendar. So I'm, I'm doing the easy version. OK, guys, I'm going with it's a 12 month calendar. So that Q1 in 2019 starts on the 1st of January and it ends in January, February, March. So it ends on the 31st of March. OK, that's what we're going with. So we need those dates. I am going to go with. We're going to we're going to duplicate this column before we split it because I need to keep the period column. So right click on it and duplicate column. I'm then going to split it. OK, so I'm then going to split this column by a delimiter. And the delimiter I'm going to use is not going to be the key. It's not just going to be a hyphen. It's going to be a hyphen Q. So I don't need the. I don't actually need the letter Q. And we're then going to click OK. So I've got a year and I've got a period, right? I need to convert that into the start month. So this is so so I'm just going to be so I'm not going to rename these columns just because I don't want to add the steps. But we're going to go with this column. So the first quarter starts in the first month. The second quarter starts on the fourth month. So I need to I need to have a sum that gives me one, four, seven, ten. So bear with me is this this I sat down with a piece of paper and I worked this out. So we're going to add a column 
and we're going to go for a custom column. And so this is going to be the period start month. Just so I don't get confused. I'm naming it. So we go for what's in copy what's in the copy to column. So in brackets. What's in the copy to column? Minus one times by three plus one. Okay. And then I click OK. Now, obviously, if your if your financial year doesn't match that, you're going to have to come up with a slightly different sum. But there we are. We've got our 14710. Right. So we can now go. We need to create a date. So now what I'm going to do is I am going to click on those two columns. And I am going to go from examples and I'm going to go from selection. And let's see if this works. This would be cool if it does. So that first one there, I want to be 01-01-2019. Okay, it's not quite right because I've got 04 here. So I'm just going to I'm just going to change this one to be 01-04-2019. Do you know what it's going to it'd be easier if I just put a four in there and then put in 2019. It's going to be a bit confused for a moment. Let's give it a chance. That one there is going to be 01 hyphen 1 hyphen 2019. And there we are. It's got what I think I'll be able to convert into a date. So let's go with that. Um, and we're going to call this period start click OK and then let's see if that will convert to a date for me that's converted to a date beautifully so now with that column selected I can now go to quarter and I can go end of quarter and there you are it's giving me the end of quarter I'm going to um, play with the M code up there just for a second and put in period end rather than the name it gave it. And then I'm going to do a home, choose columns. I can take out all of those columns and I can click OK. So now I've got a table of my team members. I've got a table of their scores in different periods. And I've got a table of the periods and what dates they relate to. The original data, just before I do a close and apply, I'm going to do a right click on and turn off the enable load. OK, and it becomes highlighted. And there we go. So I'm now going to go close and apply. And let's go and have a look in the relationships. And there we go, guys. We've got a nice related one. Well, it's worked, It's even worked out the relationships right that I've got member ID to member ID and I've got period to period. And there is my data ready to report on. Hope you enjoyed our, the video of going from my merged nightmare to three little tables nicely related ready to report on if you haven't already please press subscribe take care now <laughs>